The government's made two announcements today regarding the building and maintenance of AUKUS submarines at the Osborne Naval Shipyard in South Australia. Joining me live from Adelaide is the Acting Prime Minister, Richard Miles. Thanks for your time. A couple of important announcements today, including this mobilisation agreement on the building of the AUKUS subs. When do you hope they'll be uh, in the water, those Australian-built submarines? Well, that's a, that's a way down the track here, and uh, the, the first of the submarines that will be built here in Adelaide will be in service in the early 2040s. Uh, it's why when we announced the optimal pathway in March of last year uh, that we had the purchase of the Virginia-class submarine so that we could have an Australian-flagged nuclear-powered submarine a decade earlier in, in the early 2030s. But the mobilisation deed is a really important enabling agreement to uh, allow the joint venture to happen. The, the, the way in which our future submarines will be constructed is through a joint venture of ASC, which is uh, Commonwealth Government owned, uh, and BAE working together to undertake a contract from the Commonwealth to build our future submarines. The mobilisation deed uh, enables work to continue while that joint venture is, is being sorted through, which is going to take some time. Uh, but under the yeah. mobilisation deed, we're able to purchase long lead items, get the workforce going, start the work on the construction yard, which is where the submarines will be built. So it's a really important building block in, in the whole process that we've announced today. Indeed. And another important um, element here is 300 jobs pathways for young Australians to be part of that AUKUS industry. You've announced that alongside Peter Malinowskis today, that uh, it is an industry of the future, potentially. 100%. I mean, here in, in Adelaide, in fact, right around the country, because we will need to engage the, the nation's entire industrial base to, to do such a gigantic thing as build uh, these submarines of the future. But it is going to be focused here in South Australia. One of the real challenges is the human challenge of, of having the people we need to, to build these submarines of the future. And we meet that challenge by investing in training, which is part of what uh, the announcement is today, um, and of course this represents a great opportunity for young people in South Australia. Uh, this will see, mm. as you say, almost 300 places, uh, the, most of which will do their study here at Regency Park, the TAFE in, in South Australia. Um, this is both traineeships over the course of a 12-month period where you'll get a Cert three qualification as well as full apprenticeships, the four-year course uh, in fabrication, mechanical, mm. electrical qualifications. So it, it, it's, a, it, okay. it's one of those building blocks and there'll be more announcements like this, but, but this is evidence of the fact that we are building uh, the workforce we need to enable us to really undertake this huge industrial endeavour. It is, and there's so much at stake. And I, I ask you this in the context of the in industrial and employment opportunities. Is it time for Kevin Rudd to come home? Dan Scavino, a senior advisor to Donald Trump, has tweeted an hourglass basically saying the ambassador's time is running out. Isn't this AUKUS relationship, isn't the alliance more important than one individual's ego, being Kevin Rudd? Well, I don't think that's a fair characterisation of the, um, the the work that Kevin is doing. Uh, I, I mean, firstly, the alliance uh, is, is bigger than any government in uh, Washington, D.C., or any government in Canberra, for that matter. Um, and, and we've seen that. It's, it's transcended politics in both of our countries for many decades, in the past as it will for decades to come in the future. And we are really confident about the... Uh, place of the alliance under uh, future President Trump, um, as well as our key equities within the alliance, AUKUS being uh, front and centre. But, you know, Kevin has done a great job... What about in, the hourglass? Uh, ..working... Well, uh, Ke Kevin's done a great job in working across the political spectrum uh, in the US in the time that he's been ambassador. Democrats, Republicans and Trump Republicans alike. We saw that at the end of last year as legislation passed the United States Congress which enabled uh, AUKUS, and that included, for example, the sale of the Virginia-class mm. submarines. That was supported by people across the political spectrum, which included Trump Republicans. Uh, and Kevin was absolutely central uh, to the effort to uh, uh, work the hill to see such support for that legislation. But he and called I've got Mr no Trump a, a village idiot. 
look, Kevin, as, uh, as the ambassador, has been doing a great job, as I say, working across the, the political spectrum. He was there at the uh, Republican National Convention earlier in the year. Uh, he's, he's been really important for a number of us in terms of introducing us to uh, people who are potential uh, contributors to the Trump administration, and I've got no doubt he will be well, able Donald to Trump, well, Donald Trump represent our country, someone who's called him country with a Trump The village idiot, though? Uh, look, uh, I, I think what matters is what Kevin is doing now as the ambassador, and he is clearly focused on building our relationship uh, across the spectrum, but very much with a future Trump administration, and he will be able to represent our country. But if you can't, country, have you got a plan um, B? With a, with a have you got, if you can't, is there a plan well, B? Uh, because uh, I'm only asking this because I, I've seen Donald Trump the first iteration, and this is his second, and it's all about personal relationships with him. If he can't do it, will no. you bring him home? Because as you've started the conversation with us today, it's so important for our industry, for jobs, for our future. Uh, Ke Kevin is doing a great job as our ambassador. Um, and, and and that that is our focus and that is his focus and he and he could not be doing a better job in terms of representing Australia's interests and I have got no doubt that he will be able to continue representing those interests with a future Trump administration uh, and I'm also very confident that under President Trump uh, as once he is sworn in uh, all the key equities in our alliance with the United States will be supported and will be in place and and I'm really and you know we saw that in the conversation that president Trump, president elect Trump had with uh, Prime Minister Albanese last week uh, I, I think we can all have a sense of confidence about the future of the Australian American relationship going forward the, um, the veteran uh, Pete Hegseth is a Fox News host as well. He's just been appointed De Secretary of Defence. He's you're going to be your new counterpart. Um, I, I'm not sure. Do you, do you know him? Have you met anyone that's been announced thus far as part of the Trump cabinet, like uh, Marco Rubio or the, the National Security Advisor Waltz? Uh, look, I've not met uh, Pete Hegseth, and, and I'm, uh, but I've very much sent him uh, my congratulations. It is uh, a hugely significant role to be the United States Secretary of Defence. Uh, I really look forward to the opportunity uh, of meeting uh, Pete Hegseth and, and of working closely with him, as I have with, with Lloyd Austin, who I'll be seeing uh, later this week. Uh, I mean, so much of the, the way in which our relationship, our full bilateral relationship between Australia and America plays out happens through the prism of defence. Uh, and so it, it really is a, a very key role from an Australian point of view. Uh, and, and I'm really looking forward to, to working with him and, uh, and, and building that relationship. Do you know if the, the Prime Minister um, or, or any other senior figures have met that, you know, had contacts with the likes of Marco Rubio, the new Secretary of State, or incoming Secretary of State. I uh, also just note that Vivek Ramaswamy and Elon Musk have just been appointed in the last little while to head up a new Department of Federal Government. Um, efficiency is, is essentially what, what they've been tasked with. So it's all happening fast, but do, are there any other connections that the government yeah. has at that high level? Oh, look, we will build all of those connections. Uh, as, as I say, uh, the, uh, the Prime Minister spoke with, with President Trump uh, last week. Uh, and there will be uh, the time to build those relationships, as I've built relationships with uh, all of my counterparts uh, across the world, you know, none of whom I'd met before, uh, be, them being in their role and my being in my role. But uh, that there is absolutely the opportunity to do that and I really look forward yeah. from my point of view of being able to do that with my uh, new counterpart Pete Hexeth and, and I've got no doubt that it is going to be a, a productive relationship which will play a huge part in building Australian capability but taking the alliance into the future. Will Australia have to increase its defence spending as a percentage of GDP as Mike Pizzullo and others have argued to show we're pulling our weight? Well well, well, really, uh, well, firstly, we are increasing uh, our defence spending uh, as a percentage of GDP. Uh, we're engaging Up to in 3%. historic levels of increased... 
Well, we've, we've engaged in historic levels of increased defence spending right now. I mean, the 50 billion dollars of additional spending over the decade, the five billion dollars of additional spending over the forward estimates. I mean, in, in the context of peacetime Australia, uh, they represent historic levels of increased expenditure, uh, the largest that we've seen in decades. Now, we did that uh, in response to our strategic circumstances. Uh, and, and in a rational world, it is, it is the strategic landscape uh, which drives what one should spend on defence. And I can tell you that we are rational people in a rational government, and that's why we've made the decisions that we have and will continue to do so. It is fundamentally important, uh, given the complexity of the strategic landscape that we face right now, that so we are building if need Australian be. capability, and that's what we're that, and that's what we're doing. We we have been boosting uh, defence spending, Kieran, and we've been boosting it uh, in a historic way in terms of historically large amounts. So, I mean, I, I, the runs are on the board in terms of what we've done, yeah. um, and 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 the levels of spending that we have engaged in in defence, uh, and not just budgeting, uh, but the levels of money that we've seen actually go out the door. Uh, to Australian defence industry to build capability in the here and now. All of that is happening at record levels in terms of peacetime yeah. Australia. But we need to be doing that because we do have a very complex strategic environment and that's why we have been focused on increasing our defence budget. We're coming up to the top of the hour. I do want to, I've got to ask you this one. How about this uh, story? You'll enjoy this. The South Korean president has just started practising golf. For the first time in eight years, he's picked up a club preparing for Trump. Um, maybe you should take the Prime Minister out for some lessons or the Prime Minister should take you to Florida. What do you think? You should have uh, get on the links with the, the incoming president. <laughs> Kieran, you, you are... Uh, uh, I don't know how to answer that, and, and, and it is very bad of you, given that you and I have played golf together on the odd occasion, for you to be asking me those questions. Um, I mean, it's, it's not a secret that I don't need my arm twisted that much to, to, to go and hit the fairways. Um, I, I, look, let's see what um, we can do in terms of... Uh, I know that Anthony has hit a golf ball in the past, um, but uh, we will be... I, I, I have met President Yoon, um, South Korea is a proud golfing nation. Um, it's perhaps not a surprise that uh, he should be brushing up his skills. There you go. So if Ambassador Kennedy or anyone else is watching, uh, the Acting Prime Minister is up for an invitation for, for some golf. I appreciate your time today. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thanks, Kieran.